Good evening, YouTube. This is Johnny. It's not been 24 hours since I made a video. I made a video this morning. Today is July the 28th. It is going on 10 o'clock at night here in West Michigan. And it's a Sunday night, so it's the first day of a new week. I remember years ago when I was working. I, I stopped working in the year June 2007 on the 21st. Uh, I used to consider, well, as a Christian, you say Sunday is the day of rest, the Sabbath. But I always tell people at work that Sunday is the first day of the work week. It wasn't a day of rest. My day of rest was a Saturday from about 6 in the morning until about 3 in the afternoon on Saturday. That was my day of rest. Because usually by late Saturday afternoon, back when I was working, I was just getting dreading going back to work because I knew that Sunday was the first day of another work week. So, so when people said, oh, Sunday's a day of rest, I said, no, it's the first day of the work week. That Saturday from 6 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon was my, was my Sabbath rest. But um, now, since 2007, every day is a day of rest. Well, I'm not saying I'm free from not free from turmoil and anxiety and dread. I have my ups and downs. I try not to think about it because if I think about it too hard, then I start freaking out. And if I start freaking out, then what am I going to do? So. I thought I'd make a video because um, my wife will be off the next oh the next eight days she's off and um, I don't know when I'll be alone again I can't make a video if I know she's around now I can go into my main study or I could go down the lower level but I like I like being in the in the dining room because of the lighting and the dining room table and I can get everything spread out and and I spend a lot of time in the dining room writing in my diary and just uh, I have my laptop over here and um, so I just kind of like it here uh, but um, I thought what I would do I wasn't like I said I wasn't gonna make a video but I was talking about last night uh, Uncle Tupelo and how Uncle Tupelo broke up and uh, Jay Farrell started Sunvolt and I got the new Sunvolt record in the this afternoon Amazon delivered it this is the new Sunvolt Sunvolt is the lead singer is who was an uh, who also started Uncle Tupelo as Jay Farrell and so I was talking about Uncle Tupelo and how when they broke up uh, Jay Farrell started Sunvolt and then Jeff Twitty who was also in the band started Wilco and that I was been reading this book Wilco it's a music biography on the history of Wilco and how it came out of Uncle Tupelo uh, that Jeff Twitty started Wilco. It's called Wilco Learning How to Die by Greg Knott. Now, as I've said, I have primarily been into Sunvolt because I like Americana, country, kind of folk, kind of music. Probably it goes back to my, I like Bob Dylan, I like Crosby, Stills and Nash, Neil Young, Dinosaur Jr., people like that. And uh, whereas Wilco to me is more experimental, more pop. Now there is a certain folkness to his some of his ballads, but like I said, I'm not really that familiar with Wilco. But I do have some of their music, not all of Wilco's. So what I did last night after I made that video about, uh, I forgot, 
I made that video and I was talking about this book and I was talking about Wilco and Sunvolt that before I went to bed last night I looked for all my music by these groups Uncle Tupelo, Sunvolt and uh, now, now Sunvolt also Jay Farrell put out there was a period when Sunvolt disbanded from about 1995 to about 1905 no 2005 and Jay Farrell put out solo albums but I'm just going to show you the music I have by Uncle Tupelo, Sunvolt, Jay Farrell, Jeff Twitty and Wilco. Like I said I have Sunvolt The New One Union. This is Jay Farrell's uh, Sebastopol. This came out in 2001. This is a solo by Jay Farrell. And then this is a Sunvolt. This came out in 2005. Okomo and the Melody of Riot by Sunvolt. And this is a solo by album by Jay Farrell. Uh, Terriel Blues. This came out in 2003. This is kind of like uh, a live album by Jay Farrell. Stone Steel and Bright Lights. This came out in 2004. Yeah, when, uh, when Sunbolt disbanded, Jay Farrell still went out and gave concerts. He had a side musician with him. And I think this is what this is. I don't think there's a band with him, but I could be wrong. But these are all live recordings at those concerts. This is Sunvolt's uh, Retrospective, 1995 to 2000. <coughs> this is Wilco. This is a self-titled album, Wilco. My, my, our second son, Josiah Benjamin, is the one who's really into Wilco and into alternative music, old country music. And that's how I... But I turned him on to Uncle Tubalo because when we lived in Houston, Texas, is when I got into Uncle Tupelo. And then Josiah, our son, later on, when he got into high school, he got into the, the Jayhawks and all that kind of music, Americana. He got into Willie Nelson, you know, Mil uh, Merle Haggard and Johnny Cash and Tennessee Ernie Ford and Willie Nelson and Hank Williams and Woody Guthrie and all that. This is another uh, Wilco album, A Ghost is Born. This is another Wilco album, The Sky, Sky Blue Sky. This came out in, I don't know when this one came out. Oh, let me see. It came out and I don't know when it came out. But this is um, a Wilco album, Sky Blue Sky. This is a another Wilco. This is Billy Bragg and Wilco, Mer Mermaid Avenue. Billy Bragg is he's like a singer-songwriter from the United Kingdom. This is Wilco Yankee Ho Hotel Fa Foxtrot. This is Uncle Tupelo, an anthology, 89 to 93. This came out in 2000. This is Sunvolt Trace. It's one of my favorite Sunvolt records. This is the one that started the career of Uncle Tupelo. This is what shot them to fame and I was listening to this tonight. Uh, this is No Depression by Uncle Tupelo. This is what got them on the on the uh, shot them to fame. And then they did Still Gone. This is Uncle Tupelo. These are my favorite uh, records by Uncle Tupelo. Now I had Uncle Tupelo in all cassette. Before we came moved here to Holland, Michigan about 28 years ago, I did. I, I bought music on cassettes. 
I didn't start buying stereo. I mean, I didn't buy start buying CDs all until I don't know, 20 years ago, something like that. I bought cassettes. And all my Uncle Tupelo cassettes, when our son Josiah, he moved out to New Mexico to teach high school, he took uh, my Uncle Tupelo cassettes and he listened to them as he was crossing the country. So I don't have any of them. I can't find them. I looked last night in my cassette collection from Houston, Texas, and I don't have any. So, but I did buy these two of my favorite Uncle Tupelo records, uh, No Depression. This is their deluxe edition, which uh, has their demo that they did in 1989, Not Forever, Just For Now, which is the demo which a record company listened to and they put a record out. And then this is a Sunvolt American Central Rust by Sunvolt. This is a side project that Jay Farrell did. Uh, they found some lost lyrics of the folk singer uh, of the Depression era in America, Woody Guthrie. And this is a tribute to Woody Guthrie. These are uh, songs put together by uh, Jay Farrell, Will Johnson, uh, Anders Parker, and the guy from uh, I can't remember. I can't remember his name now. Uh, my mind just went blank. But this is all lyrics by Willie Guthrie. This is a. Uh, I found this uh, last year at the Book Nook. It was the Book Nook sells used CDs, and I found this. This is a a Jeff Twitty like bootleg of a concert that he gave. It sounds like in a bar in Chicago. Uh, Jeff Twitty lives in Chicago. So, this is another side project with uh, Andrews Parkers and Jay Farrell, uh, Gob Iron. This is a new uh, solo, just came out by Jeff Twitty, Warm. This is another Sunvolt, this is called Honky Tonk. This came out in 2013. This is the deluxe edition of Trace by Sunvolt. And this is one of my favorite Wilco, Being There. This is a, uh, a deluxe edition. So I have a lot of Sunvolt, I have a lot of Wilco, and I have a lot of Uncle Tupelo, because uh, like I said, I'm into music. All kinds of music. I, li I like old time country, Hank Williams, George Jones, Merle Haggard. I like Bob Dylan, you know, Bruce, early Bruce Springsteen. Uh, I like Bruce Coburn, people like that. Uh, but these days I kind of like loud, intense music, avant-garde, uh, black and death metal. But I can listen to jazz, I like classical, I like all kinds of music. So that's the, when we're talking about uh, the No Depression, I showed you that CD. Well, No Depression started like a, 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 a revival of alternative country music, and the, a, mu a magazine came out, and our son Josiah used to get this magazine called No Depression, and when he moved out, he was gonna get rid of what ones he had. I don't have a complete collection of No Depression. I found out tonight they're still publishing it. But these, this is the issue with Jay Farrell. This came out in December of 2001. There's an article in here, and Jay Farrell had just put out that album, uh, I just showed it to you. He put out that album. I just showed it to you. He put out the album Sebastopol in 2001. Yep, 2001. So I have the 
no depression here. And a lot, many years ago, when we first moved to Holland, I, I, we used to have a radio antenna on the roof, and I pick up a, a non-commercial station from Grand Rapids that played alternative country music, played folk music, they played this kind of music that, uh, like Robin and Linda Williams, uh, Patty Griffin, they played Beth Horton, Bear Jr., Sr., they played uh, people like Gillian Welch, and I have these records. Now, I I have a lot of I have a lot of music, and this is how I used to choose my music is by listening and reading No Depression or listening to that radio station out of Grand Rapids. And uh, you have Robert Earl Keane, which I saw in Houston. He opened up for Bob Dylan. That was back in the 80s. Uh, you have Patti Loveless. Uh, Lucinda Williams, I buy. we buy all of her music. She's one of my favorite uh, country alternative Americana blues kind of singer-songwriter. I saw her, we saw her at Calvin College a couple of years ago. Uh, so, Cowboy Junkies, uh, the Jayhawks, I, my, Josiah used to have all the Jayhawks albums and when he moved he took them all. So I don't have any Jayhawks, but Jayhawks was around the same time as Uncle Tupelo, maybe even earlier. And I saw them at Calvin College a couple years ago, a long time ago, when they opened up for Bruce Coburn, who's a Canadian singer-songwriter. But I really like the Jayhawks. This is Jimmy Dale Gelmore. I have his three or four of his records. He's like, uh, he's like from Texas. He sings like country, kind of Texas singer singer he's a singer songwriter this is loretta lynn who's very famous and this is rodney crow i was never really into rodney crow so that's the no depression magazine i kept these because i i used to get music magazines for many years i got a music magazine that i would put with my diaries. Every, I would get in the mail for many years, I got Magnet Music Magazine. These are some of them. I, most of them are in the bins with my diaries that I have over the years. Uh, I don't get music magazines anymore because I, I used to get, many, many years ago, I used to buy the Rolling Stone. Not all the time, but once in a while, like Bob Dylan Special Issues. But then I got into Magnet Magazine, and this is Steve Earle. I ha this came out in, this is Magnet Magazine, Real Music Alternatives. This came out on November and December of 2000. And this is Wilco, American Beauty. This came out the year in music in 1999. And this is how I would find out about music. I would read Magnet Magazine and I would, I got to a point where Rolling Stone Magazine was too mainstream, the music I didn't really care for, but I liked what Magnet Magazine, and one thing about Magnet Magazine, every issue, they gave you a music sampler. <laughs> Here's all the music samplers. And this is, uh, so in the, there'd be all these music, selections from different bands and you could listen to this and if you came across a band and their their music that you liked you could you know buy it and that's how I would find out about music is by these music samplers that came with every issue that you I got in the mail of magnet magazine I have I still I still have them <laughs> so yeah and I also you know, like I got uh, Q. I was in. I'm, I've never been in, really into Radiohead. 
Our oldest son, Caleb, was really into Radiohead. He saw them in concert. He was with Smashing Pumpkins. He was really into techno music. And he was really into Radiohead. And I don't know, these must be his that I've kept. This is Spin. So I was really into music magazines. There used to be, there are no magazines now that I collect. These are books that are downstairs. That these belong to our son Josiah. This is how the West was won. This is about clothing. That classic. When you get into country music, classical country music, old time country music, they were really into wearing special clothes. This is all about their fashion. Things like that. So, so you can see in the back here. This is another book by our son Josiah, American Roots Music, uh, forward by Bonnie Raitt. This is based on a PBS television series, but it's all about music. You have like in here, um, oh, there's Doc Watson. Many years ago when I lived in California, Doc Watson came into the Bay Area. It's all about roots music. You call it alternative music, roots music. So, so the point is, is that besides books, <laughs> there is music magazines, there are books on music, the history of music. There's music is just a huge area of my life. I listen to, I listen to music. I grew up listening to music, listening to the radio. Uh, for many years, I didn't have a stereo. Now, when I married Carol back in 19, what was it, 78, 79, she had an old stereo and, and old speakers. And I used to listen to Bob Dylan, but I was really into Christian music then. And But I always listened to Van Morrison and Bob Dylan and Bruce Colburn and people like that. I was always into Bob Dylan. But you're raising a family, you're going to college, you're going to seminary. When we lived in Jackson, Mississippi, there was no radio station. So I had a, I had a little cassette player. I forgot what you called it. I forgot what it was. You, had a, you put a little cassette in it, you put your earphones on, and I used to listen to cassettes on that. And then when we moved here to Holland, I used to have boom boxes. That was it. I used to have a boom box. I had those for years. When I lived out in California, when I first got married, for years I had boom boxes that played cassettes. But then when I got a job at the Hamilton Farm Bureau, one of the first things I did is I bought a stereo. I bought speakers and a receiver and a turntable and all that. And that lasted for a number of years and then it broke. And then about, I don't know, about five, six, seven years ago, I bought a really nice stereo system. A really nice one. Uh, and that, I wanted, when I bought it, I told uh, the guy, I wanted to make, I want to play really loud music. But that plays really loud. And then just recently, our son Josiah bought me, bought my wife and I new stereo speakers. You know, he built us a new computer. And then a several a couple of weeks ago, he gave me an early birthday present and there were speakers for the new computer. And those speakers play really loud music. Because I have, I have Amazon, every time you buy music from Amazon, you can download it into the music app. And I also buy MP3s and I can play them on my computer and I can play them on those new super loud speakers. And there's a big huge woofer underneath the computer and you can just really get a lot of bass. So yeah, that's the music. So I've been, tonight I've been reading Wilco, listening to Uncle Tupelo, uh, 
no Uncle Tupelo, no depression. This morning I read Reclaiming, Reclaiming Participation, Christ is God's Life for All by Cynthia Peters Anderson. And uh, I read I did dry. I read it way into the afternoon, Biblical Theology of the New Testament, Peter Schumacher. I'm really enjoying this and it's been a really a blessing to me and I thank the Lord for it. It's kind of a, been an encouragement, kind of, and um, it's always amazing me how books come into your life at certain times and how that they just, you know, really help you. So, uh, as far as what I'm going to do tonight, I've been going to get my 2000, uh, let me see here, I'm going to get my diary ready for next month. That's what I'm going to do after I, I was going to, next month is August. And in August, I always get, every month I start a new diary and I get my diary ready and that's what I'm going to do tonight. Tomorrow is the 28th of July. We're coming to the end of the, of the month of July and always got to have paper when you have your diary. Always need, oh, you know, people say, well, how do you start a personal diary, a paper diary? You need paper, you need pens, and you need a folder. You can put it in a folder or that's how I do it. And what I do is I have a calendar, as you all know, I, I rip the calendar out. Then you have September. September, I have a dentist appointment. <laughs> On the 11th, I have to get my teeth cleaned. So then you you rip it out, and then as I've always said, uh, you have to cut this ragged edges off to get it ready to put in the folder. Now I've been doing. I don't know when I started this. Now I've been keeping a diary, a paper diary, since 1968. But as I've said many times in these videos. I think it's only been the last 45 years, at least 44 years, that I've written every single day. I know I have all the diaries since the day, the, since 1978 until today. I don't have the diaries where my writings from 1968 to 1977. I don't have those. I, as you all know, when I left California to go to Bible college, I burned everything. I burned the bridges. I was starting a new life. I was going to start over again. So then when you cut it out, you got you have your folder. I use two folders. As I said, folder one is from August the 1st into August the 15th. And then I write on here, I make sure it's in the right, I put the, the month, it's August. two thousand. 19. See? This month is black. Sometimes the month is green. Sometimes the month is orange. Sometimes the month is blue. I have it stacked in my main study so I don't have the same color every single month or the month after. I try to keep them separate, the different colors. It's just something I do. But I've been doing this this way as long as I can remember. Now, when I was really young, back in California, I had all kinds of ways of, of keeping my diaries. I used to make folders or, I don't know, I had, but I've been doing it this way for a long time now. And it works for me. Everybody has their own method. For me, it's, I do it this way because uh, it works. I, 
I kind of look at my life as a book. It has, an, it has a, a first chapter, which is my birth, and then it has a last chapter, which is my death. And it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. <laughs> Maybe I'm in the middle. Maybe I'm coming toward the end of the middle. I don't know. But, uh, but when I, in my diaries, I, I keep the day, I keep, uh, I write down the page number. Tomorrow is page seven, 670 for the year 2019. I, the, on January the 1st is page 1. And then January 2, and I just keep, that's how I do it. So when 2020 comes around in January, I'll start on page one again. So I got my diary ready for August uh, Thursday, this coming Thursday, August the 1st. August the 3rd is our son Josiah's birthday. He'll be 37, I think so, 37 I think he'll be. And then on the 14th is my birthday. I'll be 67. <laughs> on the 9th of August, we go, my wife and I, we go to a, a used book sale in South Haven on Friday the 9th. So that should be fun. I hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> I don't like driving in rain. So that's it. I got my diary ready. I showed you music. I showed you how to start a paper diary. I talked about Americana, country music. I've talked about Christology. I've talked about biblical, New Testament biblical theology, American roots. It's just like everything is one. You, you can look at American history as a history of its music. You can look at American history as a history of its, of, of its religious movements. You can look at American history from political perspectives. And so it's, everything connects. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, all I've been reading tonight is Wilco, Learning How to Die. I was reading about how they recorded no depression and the impact on their lives. And he brings out how around there was beginning tension between Jay Farrell and Jeff Twitty. So it's, I don't know. So tomorrow is a Monday. I volunteer at the library used bookstore, the book nook. Maybe I'll get some books. I have some, I have some thrift store books that I have not shown. The other day I had to go to the store to get some bread and milk. And I had, I passed two thrift stores and I picked up four or five used books that I'll show sometime in the near future. So tell me what kind of music you like. Are you into Wilco? Are you into what kind of music you like? Wherever you are in the world, in Russia, England, Asia, Singapore, Boston, <laughs> wherever you're at, what kind of music you listen to? What do you like? So I hope you're having, a, you had a good weekend. I hope you have a good new week. I know this is a long video, but I wanted to share a part of myself because I talk about books, but music is really a large part of my, of my life also. Uh, there's always a soundtrack to our lives. Uh, so I'll sign off. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the new subscribers. And until next time, bye.